Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jimbo and today we're doing an overrated or underrated and we're going to be talking about this beast, this hunk, this potentially paperweight of a buffer. This is the LC Power Tools, which is a branch of Lake Country known for making buffing pads, but under a different name. This is the LC Power Tools Udos, Udos 51E. And in this video, we're going to be discussing is this tool overrated or severely underrated? So all that and more coming up in this video. So this is the world's first, I guess, five in one. So Udos, the name is for user defined orbital stroke. And then 51E is for the five in one electric, uh, as it says right there, sander and polisher. So this is the box it does a great job at kind of giving you all the specs on what you can do with it. Um, and in this video, we're not going to get too technical with all the specs. There's other videos out there that are, are, you know, take this whole thing apart, but I wanted to at least do an overview. So on the top of the box, it talks about the bumpers, uh, talks about the, the stroke, uh, the motor, it's a 1200 watt motor, uh, claims it's the most powerful on the market. And I would hope so coming in at seven and a half pounds, it's about two pounds heavier. Uh, than the Rupes Mark III. Uh, and when you look on the back, uh, it has QR codes that actually were, QR codes were like super popular, what, five years ago and then faded out and then the virus happens and everyone's scanning their menu now with, with QR codes. So they're kind of making a comeback. But the five uh, tools, I guess, in the, in the one tool are a rotary. So rotary polisher, heavy cutting, all that. There's a small throw, they call it for sanding, it's the S, um, but, and I'll show you what the S means when we unbox the machine, um, but an eight millimeter sanding, um, if you're into sanding, and then there's three different throws in the random orbit. So we have a 12 millimeter throw, my favorite, which is a thir uh, 15 millimeter throw, not 13, and then the biggest one of a 21 millimeter throw, and I don't think that was on accident to have those uh, size throws, I think, that, you know, directly targeting the competition there with those throws or either directly targeting the competition or really, um, really making it uh, uh, kind of doing with what the market is doing. So they claim it is the world's first, which it is five in one professional polisher. They have a worldwide patent uh, assembled or built in the US, but it has global materials. Uh, and like I said, comes in at seven and a half pounds. So this is a bulky bulky machine uh, for what you're getting. So included in the box is the polisher itself, a five inch backing plate, and then a couple D handles, uh, which you can choose to use or not. They did also send me with this machine, three different polishing pads. We can get extra B-roll of those too. So let's open up the box and uh, see what you're gonna get in this thing. I can figure out how to open it. I guess you just rip it. All right. There we go. Like I'm missing something here. All right, so there is that five inch backing plate that we talked about. It also does work with the six inch backing plate. Um, comes with a 10 foot cord and there's the machine itself. We have the user manual if you need one of those, but really who reads instructions nowadays anyway. So, and then we have the machine, the beast itself. So looks like all the other uh, machines out there on the market with the exception of the head of it is extremely heavy, but uh, it has all the common things that you would expect in a machine, has the trigger lock over here on the side, has the dial control with numbers, um, has the soft grip so if you go to set it down, it's not going to scratch the machine itself. And then we have this ginormous head on the top that we will go through now. So around the side of the machine and at the front of the machine, this is really what tells you what um, what mode you're in. So if you're in the sanding, if you're in the 15, if you're in the 21 or whatever, but as I'm going to hold it down like this, cause it's pretty heavy. Um, and the, I would say the only thing that I think they should have changed is when you look at this, they have the, 
sander. They have the they have the S for the sander. They have the R for the rotary. But then when it gets to the orbital throws, it switches to P1, P2, and P3, obviously for position one, two, and three. But then you have to remember what orbit is position one, position two, position three. I actually think that they should have just put a 12 or a 15 or a 21 right there instead of P1, P2, P3. It would have taken up the same amount of space. But anyway, what I really want to show you is before I put the backing plate on, notice how this changes, kind of the inner workings of the machine. I just think it's kind of cool. Um, so if you lift this up and turn it, you can notice how the machine, that just went from rotary to sander. And then if you lift it up again and go to P1, you notice the dial on the inner workings going. It's just kind of interesting for no other. That's how it works. And then obviously the counterweight um, is what's changing or what helping get that orbit. But as you can see, a little bit of a learning curve to, you know, it's not a bad learning curve. It's just a learning curve because you've never played with a machine like this. But before I put on the backing plate, I just wanted to show you kind of that interesting inner working of the machine. So to assemble the backing plate, what you're gonna have to do is put this in position and line up the holes like so, and then put the screw right down into the middle. Then you could take the supplied hex key and twist, there we go, and twist that on like so. It'll kind of flip down and hold it in place until it's hand tight. There you go. And that's how you put on the backing plate. So along with the machine, uh, I guess Lake Country or LC Power Tools as they have branded the pads to, came out with three separate pads in very interesting colors. I'm not sure if I even like the colors, but I appreciate that they're very different. But we have a microfiber pad, be obviously more of a cutting pad. Uh, we have a medium finish pad, think of like the Rupes yellow pad, that's what this one would be. And then there's a green, uh, quite, you know, really open cell coarse pad that would probably do, like I would use this one for if you're doing a lot of, uh, or if you're gonna do like a one step polish with something like an HD Speed or even the Hybrid Solutions Pro, uh, one and done compound, kind of an all in one. I usually team up with a heavier pad uh, to get some of that extra cut. This would be more of a finishing pad. Uh, this would also be more of a cutting pad. If you're working on really hard paint with an all-in-one or trying to go really aggressive with it, you may, uh, you can get away with this. Uh, you probably could even do it on the rotary setting. I don't know that it's meant for that. Obviously these two you can use on the rotary setting if you wanted to, uh, but just realize with a rotary, it's a rotary. So let's put a pad on just for the sake of this video. I'm just gonna use kind of the medium here, because we're not really uh, trying to do anything too crazy. This is just demonstrative purposes. Also, uh, if you could see, it's kind of hard to see, but it's all about airflow for this machine. It is pretty heavy. Even holding it with one hand, it's, it's pretty heavy. But it's all about airflow for this machine. So we have, on the back of the backing plate, we have these, uh, Good hook and loop there. Uh, we have these holes on the back of the backing plate and then also the vents at the top of the backing plate that are really trying to redirect air out of there or create that airflow holes here and then again vents here because uh, it's all about keeping that heat down or that heat reduction. So and as we look at the top of the machine here we can really see uh, the dial. So you have to make sure that all these white lines are lined up. The backing plate is a free spinning, so that doesn't matter, but this blue part here, as well as this, is really how you switch it from one place to another. And I actually really like that clicking sound. It's kind of awkward for me to do it as I'm shooting the video, but maybe I don't, oh, see, if you don't have it, it's just cockeyed just a tad. Where's the camera? There we go. It's cockeyed just a tad, so it really has to be directly on, and then it's not that difficult of a spin if I can get it literally direct. There we go. It has to be exact. If it's off just a tad, it, will, it locks and does not hold up. So that's P3, P2, P1, sanding, and rotary. So let's go on the rotary first. There we go, and then it locks. You can't spin that. We'll go on a rotary. I'm gonna do a little 
Hybrid Solutions Pro, one and done compound. And we'll look for noise and see if this uh, weight is really gonna be an issue. And then we'll flip through the P12 and P3. So I'll start it low on speed. We'll do speed three. I do wish that the trigger was kind of more of a locking or not a locking, but it kind of gave you something to realize where you're at, not just totally free spinning, but let's. That's speed four. Incredibly smooth. Probably the weight of it is really helping it to be very, very smooth. Let's go all the way up. So that's speed past five, but there's no six. You can really hear I'm applying no pressure. So that's really cool. It actually wasn't as loud as I thought it was gonna be on a rotary setting, uh, incredibly smooth and really smooth way smoother than I thought it was gonna be. So I'll be interested to see when we jump over to the, uh, let's go to, uh, so again, you have to line it up perfectly, then that allows you to flip it. I'm not gonna go over the sanding. I don't do a lot of sanding, but if you wanna do sanding, it's there, but man, you gotta be really precise with where that's at for it to switch over. Maybe I'm doing something wrong but it's got to be there we go so p1 is the 12 millimeter throw i believe again this is kind of why earlier i was like oh, i wish they would have had a you know a number because i think it goes 12 15 and then 21 so this is the 12. guess i don't need to start all the way up plenty of power actually a lot of power It does vibrate quite a bit, but it doesn't seem overly uncomfortable. It is fairly smooth in that 12 millimeter throw. Good spin, even when bogging it down. So I think it does really good for a 12 millimeter throw. And this is really where I think the tool is so cool and so valuable is if you need to, if you hit a section of the car and you need to bump it down to a 12, meter mil, 12 mil, millimeter throw, or you want to go to a 15, which is my favorite, you could do that. A 15 millimeter throw on a five inch pad is my go-to. I feel like that's most versatile. There we go, that's speed all the way up. Actually, the 15 millimeter throw is a lot smoother, way smoother. By the way, shout out to Turtle Wax. Look at how well uh, lubricated this compound is. But all right, so we'll switch it back and now we'll check out the 21 millimeter throw, which I, I think it's me on this backing plate. I don't think it's the machine. It, it, it's not super easy, but it's not super difficult. That was interesting. The 15 millimeter throw was a lot smoother than the 12, a lot smoother. And here's the 21. That was great. I was adding as much pressure as I could. Overall, I still think 15 millimeter is the sweet spot. I didn't love the 12, uh, but the rotary, the 15 and the 21 all felt incredibly good. I will say it's a little heavy. So if you're on a panel, this can't find the camera. There we go. If you're on a panel this way, 
It helps if I put the machine towards the camera. That's when I find the camera. So if you're on a car this way, this seven and a half pound machine is going to get heavy, but on a flat panel, it's really good. And I think being as versatile as being able to just line these up as much trouble as I'm having um, with it. If you could just line them up and do it. There we go. I think it's going to get better. I'm just not used to doing it. So I think that in and of itself is super, super valuable, but Overall, from working and kind of demoing it on this panel, I'm super, super impressed with this machine. All right, so in my opinion, this machine is extremely underrated. And it's underrated, you know, in a time that we've seen very little development in the in the arena of tools. Sure, a few years ago, we had Rupes, which completely changed everything, going from the portal cable, 7424. But ever since Rupes kind of changed the game with the 21 millimeter throw and the 15, we really haven't seen any tool innovation. I shouldn't say we haven't seen any. We've seen very little tool innovation. So I think for the right person, this tool, like a lot of other tools, can just become part of the arsenal. So if you're looking to save money and have five tools in one, if you're looking to save space, I know for either professionals or for enthusiasts, space sometimes comes into uh, a problem. Uh, if you're, so if you're looking to save money, space, and time, again, instead of having to have a bunch of different cords plugged in and having to switch between machines, you could simply have one machine. Uh, this is gonna be the tool for you. It does come in about 700 bucks. Um, and does weigh that seven and a half pounds, which I think is the biggest deterrent from it is the weight itself. Uh, but if you can kind of get over those things, um, I think that you would be extremely satisfied with this machine. Again, plenty of power, plenty of power in all those. So the weight is definitely something they could work on. But in my opinion, this machine is extremely underrated. And so, yeah, with that, I'd love to hear your thoughts, feelings, and opinions below. And also comment below what other tools, techniques, tips, or tricks you'd like to see either overrated or underrated, at least in my opinion, if you hold my opinion in high regard, I guess. And on your way down there, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button so you get first alerted of new videos just like this one. Catch you on the next one. See ya.